Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Advanced Topics. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about function inlining. Now function inlining is an optimization that your compiler will do for you, where it replaces um, a function call with the function body itself. And what we're doing this for is performance, right? But where that performance comes from, um, a lot of times it can be misattributed. So a lot of people think that it may be because we're getting rid of the extra instructions um, for you know setting up a function call and then you know say calling the function. Um, and so while it's true that these do generate a little bit of overhead, that's not the primary reason why we do function inlining. Now the primary reason why we do function inlining is because of two things, right? Our instruction cache and then also instruction scheduling, right? So let's think about those two things. So if we think about what a function call really is, we're just jumping to a different part of the program, executing some code, and returning back. Now let's think about the case where we go ahead and just inline our function. Now we've gotten rid of a branch to some code, and now the next instruction we're going to execute is just the next instruction in the program. We're not having to jump to a different part of our program right, to fetch a new instruction. So this is all based upon locality, right? So we have better locality in some, typically with something like an inline function because what we're executing next is just the next instruction, not an instruction from somewhere you know, completely different in memory. Now the other part comes with um, optimizations and giving your compiler more context. So if the compiler has more code to rearrange and schedule, it can typically do a better job and make some faster code. So when we inline a function, we're basically just giving the compiler more room for optimizations, right, within, you know, wherever we're inlining. And we can also do some more advanced types of uh, optimizations. So, you know, doing optimizations between multiple different functions, uh, or these things called interprocedural uh, optimizations, are more difficult without inlining. If we just, say, you know, paste the code body of a um, of a function call, right, at the call site, it's a lot easier to do those types of optimizations. So we can generally see some performance benefit there. But that's not to say that we always get, um, we always get a performance benefit or it's always worth it to inline. This is something like most optimizations that go on a uh, case by case basis. But let's look at this kind of at the assembly level and we'll show that we can even say force the compiler to inline a function for us. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just write a simple function. So we'll write a function called square that takes a number and all it will do is return uh, num times num, right? So just the square of say an integer. And this is our, our, our function right here. And we'll go ahead and do, you know, dash f omit frame pointer, right? Just to clean up our code a little bit. So you see it just boils down to an imol instruction. So we're just multiplying a number by itself. Then we can go ahead and write another function. So we can say maybe a void function called test, where we say create an integer a. We set it equal to maybe five. And then we create an integer b and make that equal to the square of a. So now you see uh, we go ahead and you know subtract 16 from our stack pointer. We store five, and then we go ahead and set up our function call. We call square and then we go ahead and uh, get the result back. Okay, so how do we inline this function or make sure that this function gets inlined? Now, most of the times your compiler will just do it for you. So if we go ahead and do something like, you know, dash 01, we can see if it compiles um, or we'll see if it does it for us. But a lot of times this can be kind of tricky to work with because um, maybe it'll just eliminate your code in something like Compiler Explorer. But if we go ahead and look in, um, if we look here at um, the GNU manual um, for GCC and the optimization levels, you see at 01 optimization, it turns on the following uh, optimization flags. And so one of them here is F inline functions called once. So we'll probably get some function inlining if we just turn on optimizations. If you don't turn on optimizations, um, you actually get some pretty unoptimized code out. So doing something like 02 or 03 optimizations can provide some pretty big speed up to your code. But what happens if we use a keyword? Like what happens if we say inline here? Will it go ahead and inline the function for us? Well, it doesn't look like it. Inside of test, we still have a call here. Now, what if we really know what we're doing? We really want the compiler to go ahead and um, um, to go ahead and uh, inline this function for us. Well, we can actually force the compiler to do this um, through this underscore underscore um, attribute, not built in, attribute 
and then always in line. So when we do this, we're basically tying the hands of the compiler and saying, okay, compiler, you have to inline this function. And now you can see that within our test function now, we have our IML instruction. So we basically just took the contents of this square function and placed it inside of our test function. And we've gotten rid of our function call. Now what happens with this attribute always inline when we go ahead and get rid of test now? Well, because it's always inlined, you see it doesn't generate any assembly. It has to be inlined whenever it gets called. So we're basically tying the hands of our compiler saying, you have to you know, go ahead and inline this function. So the reason why you know, giving a hint by just saying inline doesn't always inline the function is because um, the compiler does some cost benefit analysis to inlining. So the compiler tries to check, is it a good idea to inline or is it not? So the compiler, even if you give it the hint that it should inline this function, it may decide that it's still not worth it. So it won't go ahead and inline that function for you. Uh, but in this case, we can kind of, again, tie the hands of the compiler by passing in this attribute. And this also depends on what, uh, this also depends on which compiler you're working with. It may be different um, between something like GCC and Clang versus MSVC, right? They may use different attributes here or different ways to kind of tie the, the, the compiler into doing what you want. But that's gonna go ahead and do it for this video. As always, you can find out any of the content for this series and others at github.com slash coffee before arch. We've got stuff on C++ programming, GPU programming with CUDA, some stuff on Rust, and even some stuff with modern C++ 20. But again, that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.